What happens when you take two serious anglers, drop them on an unknown body of water, and give them a mission to conquer the lake and each other? There he is. Ooh, that's a mule. Two different patterns, one unknown lake, with no practice and no preparation. Who will catch the most fish and how? The only way to find out is to go commando. The mission is simple. Two experienced anglers. Two different battle plans. Going head to head on one unfamiliar body of water. Steve Panaz takes us to the front line of fishing to learn the lessons of the Lake Commandos. You might think a Lake Commando would prefer to take on smaller waters, battlefields that are easier to handle, all the fish in a smaller barrel, so to speak. But no battleground is too big for a true Lake Commando including the largest freshwater lake in the world, Mighty Lake Superior. And that's exactly where Steve Benaz and Hall of Fame angler Jim Kalkofen are headed. You know, one of my favorite things is to break down a new body of water with an angler that really knows his stuff. Jim Kalkofen ran fishing tournaments for years and years, has traveled all over the country, and excels at fishing new bodies of water. Today's commando mission is to track down and catch Lake Superior smallmouth bass in the fall. Taking on a monster like Lake Superior can seem overwhelming, but a lake commando knows how to make even the biggest water smaller by using technology and experience. Here are the details on the lake locals call the Big Blue. At nearly 32,000 square miles, Superior is the largest freshwater lake on the planet. It has a max depth of over 1,300 feet and an average depth near 500 feet. It's clear and cold with average water clarity near 25 feet and an average water temp of 40 degrees. If that was how you approach this massive lake, you'd be in trouble. So the first step is to narrow your target. Today, the commandos will focus on a section near Ashland, Wisconsin, known as Shaquamagon Bay. At around 25 square miles, the bay is still big, but it's manageable. It's also much shallower than the rest of the lake with an average depth of 28 feet. And it's much more fertile than the main lake, so water clarity is reduced to about eight feet. Available habitat is wide ranging from shoreline breaks and weed lines to massive rock reefs and man-made riprap. Cover is also diverse, but the main source of prime cover in the bay is rock, including massive boulders, reefs, and riprap areas. Forage is abundant, including yellow perch, ciscos, rainbow smelt, and a wide variety of minnow species. The weather is always a concern on the big water, but today the commandos have very good conditions, with air temps in the 60s, water temps near 50, and light to moderate winds. That's the battleground the lake commandos are facing, and we're about to find out their plan of attack, but we also want to know how you would fish it, so let us know online. I'm going to go to some slender spoons. I really like this style of spoon for this type of water. I can fish it over the weeds, I can fish it over the rocks, I can fish it in three feet of water, I can fish it in 23 feet of water. I like it because I let the spoon go down and then I rip it up, let it drop, rip it up, let it drop, and it triggers the fish into from coming out of their hiding spots and hitting it. I'm going to be using these spoons today with 8 pound nanofill on a 6'6 Fenwick Elite Tech rod designed for smallmouth with a Pfluger Patriarch reel. I think that's the perfect combo. You know, for my pattern today, I wanted a bait that I could fish shallow, I could fish deep, I could count down, I could fish on bottom, I could vertical jig. It's, it's, a, it's a unique lure, it's called the Seville Spin Shad, and it's a, it's a heavy uh, bait that actually sinks, it's got a spinner on the back, and I'm gonna be able to fish this slow or fast. I've got it on 10 pound uh, trilene, 100% fluorocarbon for a liter. I've got eight pound nanofill in, in the, the new uh, green color. This is a six foot nine inch Veritas. This is an Abu Garcia Revo spinning reel. Again, this is eight pound nanofill. Now I like the, uh, the nano so I can make long cast cover water. I'm gonna count this bait down 
get it in your bottom and bring it back with a, either a slow, steady retrieve, or I'm gonna let it bring it up and let it flutter down. But this is the technique, this is the equipment I'm gonna use to beat Jim today. So the commandos will put two unique presentations to the test with Steve's heavy metal spin shad against the age old jigging spoon. What we're working here right now, there's a sand flat that, that covers here and it comes up into some weeds here. We're in about seven to eight feet of water and then it drops down and it goes into a brake line. We're just going right along the brake line casting the brake line in that sand flat. I'm thinking with this sun, uh, these fish might move up shallow in this calm conditions and, and uh, feed on this area. This should warm relatively quickly today with this hot sun and uh, this high sun and no clouds. It's been almost two hours. <clears throat> we haven't had a fish yet. I'm uh, willing to con concede and head over to, uh, if you wanna. And put that beauty. I, I love that bait. I mean, I, yeah. I just it's just not working today. It wasn't the right day for Steve's spin shad choice, but the switch to the Johnson spoons produces almost immediately. It's a nice smallie though, he's just a tank. We're in 12 feet of water here. We moved out of that seven foot hole. Yep. And just uh, came out a little deeper. Well, in smallmouth fishing, if they're not in one spot, you keep checking. <laughs> Jeez. Not like I'm taking it easy on him either. Oh, he's a tank. Whoa, look at that. Jimbo, that's a freaking giant. How big is that? Boy. That's why we're here, baby, right here. I mean, this is why we came up and there's some giants in this lake, but look at the size of that fish. You know, when you catch a five pounder in your first fish, you know you're at the right lake. Things started a little slow, but a fish like that can change a commando's attitude in a hurry. Now, does Jim Kalkofen have an answer? We'll find out. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life, Trilene, Angler's Trust, Berkeley Trilene, Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Nanofill, the next generation in fishing line. And by Fish Hound, when to go, where to go, what to throw. The Lake Commandos are on a mission to find and catch big smallmouth on the intimidating water of Lake Superior's Shaquamagon Bay. But one commando that has never been intimidated by a challenge in the world of fishing is Jim Kalkofen. A Hall of Fame member, Jim was instrumental in taking walleye tournament fishing to new heights of national recognition. Now he devotes his time to helping others as director of the annual Minnesota Fishing Challenge Tournament that has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge Faith-Based Addiction Recovery Program. Steve selected a pattern and I let him go first because I wanted to sort of, you know, become a familiar with the water. Then we switched to a pattern that I thought would work great and does uh, usually on fall smallmouth as a spoon. There you go. There we nice go. Beauty. Another nice smallmouth. Wow. The color on that fish is just stunning. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look at the, the bars on his face. And, and There we go. Look at that. That's a solid three and three quarter pound fish. You know, early this morning we were fishing the Sabeel spin shad and we were casting them like a spinning, uh, like a spoon. We'd throw them way out, let them sink to the bottom and bring them back and let that blade turn and then fall. We'd have hits and I think what those fish were doing was ramming the bait and ramming the bait. On one cast I had three hits like that and we had the same thing happen with spoons. The difference with the spoons is they, uh, they eventually grabbed the bait and we caught them. But it was interesting that they were reacting to it almost the same exact way. Spoon and bass, I had two hooks in him. That is a long fish. Look at the size wow. of that guy. Man. He's thin though. Very He's thin. Not as fat as those others were. Uh-uh. Well, I hate to tell you, but uh, that's two to one. <laughs> Quality. I like to think I know how to fish a spoon for smallmouth. And I would fish it my traditional way, and sometimes I'd get a few bites. But then Steve was fishing it his traditional way, 
and longer sweeps than mine, and he got more bites than I did. So I started doing what Steve was doing with longer pulls up, letting it drop back, and started getting more bites. Anyway, oh yeah, there we go. Way to go. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Spoonage. Spoonage. <laughs> the key that I learned is if you think you know it all and it comes to fishing, you don't. Well, we Look. made a, you know, we just made a big move. We ran probably eight, ten miles up up the lake and we're on a rock pile. It's got a lot of fish on it. And it's good. This is our first first fish in, the, in about 15 minutes. So let's, let's put them back in here and yep. we'll get another one. You know, this is one of those situations where long casts really did make a difference in the amount of fish you caught because if you were casting 100 feet and, and someone's casting a, a different line and casting 50 feet, we really had about a 50% chance better on every cast to catch more fish. fish. Nanofill helped put fish in a boat today for us because we could cast so far. It's a walleye. It is. What did I say? Wow! Well, these spoons are catching everything today. Walleye. And did he eat it? Look at that. Wow. You know, when you're fishing the Great Lakes, you could catch anything that swims because everything that swims lives in some place in the Great Lakes. Fish, Jim. Oh, you don't suppose it'll be another walleye out here? Uh, it is. <laughs> what is that? A sucker. It's a is that a sucker? Oh, maybe it's a whitefish. A sucker hit this. Unbelievable. You know, it's funny, we get out here and Jimmy catches a smallmouth right away and, and has another bite. And so I'm thinking, okay, we got fish all over the screen. They're just everywhere down there. The next fish is a walleye. The next fish after that's a sucker. We're the smallmouth right now. We're fishing for smallmouth bass. And when you fish spoons, it's like fishing jigs. You can catch just about anything. What I didn't expect to catch today were suckers. That's in the mouth, man. We had several, uh, two, three, four of them. And they were big, you know, up to up to two, three pounds. That's a pair of lips only a mom would love. <laughs> fishing for one species, you're gonna catch three or four, or maybe five or six species when you're fishing the Great Lakes. Is that a white fish? Yeah, it's a white, it's a white fish. fish. It's a big white fish. Check that out. That is cool. One of the biggest surprises today, however, is to caught a big lake white fish. These are a tremendous sport fish. They're great smoked and they're great fresh. I guess I regret one thing, letting it go. I should have thrown it right in the live box. This is kind of the basis of a lot of the forage in here, but two of these are great smoked. I'm not gonna keep them though, but this is a big one. That's a big white fish. Kind of slide him back in here. It's turning into a multi-species slugfest on the Big Bay, but so far, neither man has the upper hand in the battle for top commando. This segment of Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Yeti, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Today we had wind from several directions. It changed 180 degrees during the middle of the day. It was blowing 15 or higher for a while, flat calm for a while. So you have to keep experimenting. That's one thing that I learned about the weather on the Great Lakes. Keep trying new areas. Look at that. Oh, I'll just got, hoist them in. Him. Hoist them in. You know, you look at this fish and it's what, 12 inches long? But look at how fat that thing is. Boy. Just chunky. Chunky. And look at this. You know, one of the things I screwed up on is I missed a couple of fish. I can show you why right there. I didn't check my hooks. But, uh, you know, I'm gonna let this guy go. You know, the spoon pattern's been producing fish and multiple fish. We've caught smallmouth, we've caught walleye, we've caught red horse sucker. And really, it's just a very simple bait. And uh, my problem was I didn't check my hooks and I lost two fish that I should have had. You know, if I had a different approach for today, I, every time I come to a body of water, I sit on the shoreline and go, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? I think crate baits would have been a great choice today because I didn't realize we'd find the fish as shallow as we did. We found some fish up in eight, nine, ten feet of water, which is prime cranking, but the spoons were still deadly. The shallower we get, the more we're seeing them now. Look at that nine, color. Nine feet of water. Look at that. One. Yeah, 
Look at those salmon. Those are just beautiful fish, aren't they? They're eating something out here. You know, I'm only I'm only up two on you now. You keep fishing, you never know. I have stopped keeping track a long time ago. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you fish a method like this, we have been, you learn a lot about the little nuances, the size, the cadence, you know, the jig strokes. I noticed on your jig strokes, Jim, you're, you were doing more of a little up up rip like this, and I'm yep. doing more of a pull. And both both are producing, but there are times one or the other is going to be better. And when you figure out what that cadence is, and yeah, it can make a big difference. Well, and and you know, people can't be afraid to vary that cadence. So it might be, you know, like in a spoon, you're just twitching the rod tip six inches, twitch, 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 nothing happens. You just lower the rod, lift it from nine o'clock to twelve o'clock, and, and then let it fall down. I mean, there's just a, a variation. And, like we've talked about before, it's hard to go wrong with a spoon. You know, it's interesting. We had some fish today that fought super hard, and we also had two or three fish that didn't fight out at all. You'd set the hook, they'd come flying up to the surface. I don't know There's why one. or what. Yeah, Small most typically like fight extremely well, time. and some of them did today, but some didn't. There go. <laughs> Look at that. Another toad. They're all nice. Aren't they? Toad delicious. You know, a little later in the day, we, we made a run to the north shoreline and we looked for fish along a break line that went from eight down to 60 feet of water, thinking that there might be pods of smallmouth along this narrow band of, of, shallow, of uh, medium depth water and it went from shallow to deep kind of quickly. What I didn't expect was to pull up in the shoreline and just see the explosion of color. That's beautiful. Man, look, look at that. that. It's stunning. Fall is here and this was probably the most beautiful colors I've seen in years. Pretty soon this is going to be snowy, ice covered, and pretty forlorn for the um, for this part of the, the world. But I tell you what, until that ice forms, this is where you can really catch some nice fish. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yamaha Marine. Reliability starts here. Gulp alive. Looks, feels, tastes alive. Yeti coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer, not too kinky, no kinks ever, and by Humminbird, simply, clearly better. Jim, you see him on the surface there? Oh, look at that. He creamed it. 19 feet of water. We've, wow, been, what, we've been fishing shallow, shallow almost all day. Look at this throbber, man. Oh, 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 oh. Just throbbing. Lighten this drag up a little bit. Oh, he's gonna jump, watch it! Ah, don't jump! Oh, that's a mule. Oh, that is a dandy fish. Ooh, 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 ooh. The there, there he is, there, there he is. is. Oh, look at the size, look at that. Ooh, ooh, he's got, where he's got that spoon. Take him, yes! There we go, there we go. Look, look at that. Look at the size of that bass. Whoa, that's a smallie, baby. Wow, look and look at, at the spoon just came right out of his mouth. Boy. Oh, man. Look at that one. Look at that fish. I got to look at this. Oh, man. <laughs> what really surprised me about this bay behind us is how much smallmouth habitat is really here. You'd think a bay like this that holds uh, trout and salmon would be real deep and, and have relatively uh, little smallmouth habitat. I was stunned when we got out there. There are miles and miles and miles of gravel and sand and rock, and all of these areas hold fish at least one time or another. And we've had some mules today. I mean, look at that thing. Oh. oh. When, when you can get smallmouth that are in that 20 inch range anywhere, yeah. you want to go back. You know, on the splinter spoon, too. There's no question. The commandos have proven beyond a doubt <laughs> that big water doesn't have go. to be intimidating. Ah especially when you go commando. When you rely on your instincts and experience and utilize the best tools, any lake, no matter how big, becomes just another lake. And a bass is just a bass. Of course, in some places, those bass are just a little bigger than in others. One thing I learned today from Mr. Panaz is that he always needs a good net man with him and I was glad to oblige. Good fishing today.
I'm Captain George Mitchell. This is Coastal Chaos. Knowing the precise amount of pressure you're putting on the fish is important at all times. As a rule, I won't set my drag any more than 30% of my line's breaking strength, sometimes as little as 10%. I test and Three, then label each reel often, but again, definitely before any tournament watches. and only after warming the drag washers. 22. All right, great. I'm happy with that. Everything's jiving. It's just what we got set. I like it. Let's go catch a whopper. Always set your drags with the line that you're using, not your leader or your backing. And make sure that your reel is in a stationary position to ensure that your drag settings are accurate. Setting the proper drag is especially important when fishing with heavy offshore gear. My Penn International 70s are loaded with 100 pound test strand mono. Max drag is at 30 pounds, but for soft mouth fish like swordfish, I'll bring it all the way back to 16. I always err on the side of caution. I'd like to be able to tighten the drag up opposed to wondering how big was that one that got away. Keep in mind that line pressure changes constantly during a fight. You can adjust the drag to respond to things like water pressure on the line, a low spool, line stretch, and changes in direction of the fish. And if it ends up being the non-target species, you can always boot the drag up and get a quick release. Setting your drags is a detail that no angler should overlook.